Hey everyone, this is David. They call me Tina's husband, Diamond Dave. They call me all kinds of things that I answer to. Just wanted to make this video and clarify some things with the compressed air supercharging system that we run on Tina's truck. Mark Griffin, as you guys know, also runs the system on his Camaro. Uh, both Tina and Mark run the 2400 horsepower system, but tonight we're gonna talk about this 1400 horse system we're gonna be installing it on my blue Colorado. Kenzie's been driving it some. I'll drive it some next year, she'll drive it some. But we're gonna install this system. But tonight we're gonna to discuss all the components of the compressed air supercharging kit. So as you guys can see, the bottle here, these I believe they call it 155 standard cubic foot bottle. They have some new bottles that are 200 standard cubic feet. Uh, they're a little bit shorter I think and bigger round I haven't got my hands on one of those yet but these are the bottles that we run in Tina's truck and these are the bottles that we'll be putting in the Colorado we're gonna install two bottles in this truck uh, it's good for about 1400 horsepower with the components that we have here first like I said is the bottle just to give you guys kind of an idea this is uh, nitrous Express standard nitrous bottle and Aluminum bottle, the bottle that we have here is a carbon fiber bottle. It weighs about 33 pounds uh, with the valve on it and full of air. The next item that we have uh, is the regulator. Now this regulator has a lot of components to it. It knocks the 3,300 pounds of air pressure out of the bottle down to about 100 pounds, 118 pounds, somewhere in there. It has full dome control on it. So you can launch with five pounds of boost. You can launch with 20 pounds of boost. Whatever you wanna to do to it, it can handle it. That regulator knocks it down to, like I said, about 100 pounds, and then we regulate that down to whatever boost pressure we want inside the engine. The next component in the system is the lock off valve. Now this turns the air on and off. So this would be like for your nitrous guys, it'd be like your nitrous solenoid, but it turns the air on and off. So you can, you can turn it on right before you launch. You can turn it on down track, like a, some type of nitrous progressor or maybe a throttle stop racing, something to that nature. The airlines that we have this is the airline that we have for going from the bottle to the regulator. Now these are high pressure valves. They're about, I think they are rated at around 16,000 pound burst. They're not your typical AN lines. They're aircraft AN stainless steel hose ends. And I don't know how many layers, probably 10 layers inside. They don't bend very easy. They're high pressure. They're uh, pressure checked before they send them, hydro checked and tagged so that we know that they'll hold the pressure. Now after the regulator, we have just a standard uh, Dash 20 AN hose with standard hose ends that we'll be building for this truck and what's installed on the other Colorado that we have. So like I said, the air comes out of the bottle, goes to the regulator, gets knocked down from the regulator uh, down to about 100 pounds, basically 118 pounds, goes into the lockoff valve. Lockoff valve turns the air on and off, and then it goes through this Bosch drive by wire throttle body, and this is regulated to control the boost curve throughout the run. This regulates on and off. You control it however you want to do it, it's fully controllable by the, by the user. The last component is what we call the ejector valve. And this basically sets up by the throttle body. And when the air comes on, when the lockoff valve turns the air on, it allows air to come in through the dash 20. And there's a tube in there. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's a tube that directs the air directly into the engine. And so this shuts off any outside air. This valve shuts, it's a big, like, Throttle body basically shuts out any outside air, so the engine is solely running off 
the bottled air, no outside air at all. So basically we do our burnout naturally aspirated, no compressed air involved with that, stage the car, and then right before the car launches, it instant boosts the engine, and as soon as she lets out of the throttle at the end of the track, goes back to naturally aspirated, and the car runs back to the pits. The air coming out is extremely cold. I've got measurements of about 90 below zero coming out of the regulator. I have a high uh, pressure, high, basically a really good sensor that will detect all those negative temperature sensors. It's a mil spec. Uh, it's, I'm surprised it has lasted this long, but it has, it has done its job. So we're seeing about negative 20 come into the engine after it gets warmed. Basically, as it's coming in, it, it will pick up a little bit of temperature. But it's ice cold air. And as you guys know that run turbos now, you know, you're heating up the transmission when you're spooling up and bumping in. Somebody may burn you down. Uh, we have not even changed transmission fluid in the red truck all year basically it's it's been pretty amazing that it doesn't burn the transmission fluid because of the you know the non spooling up and bumping in so we're going to be installing this system on the blue truck and i'm going to video that as we go so you guys can tune in and see how we do it those are the basic components of the system and if you guys have any questions just comment and i'll try to get on there and answer any questions but basically we have the bottle regulator lock off valve Bosch drive by wire and the ejector valve. So hope that solves any questions that you guys have. Like I said, comment if you guys have any more questions and we'll make another. Thanks.